Grace and peace multiply to you and yours and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep His commandments. Thank God He allowed us to wake up and see another day on His glorious Sabbath day. Now, this is the lesson I like to call God's Dietary Law, because it's in the Bible, and it's in the Old Testament and the New Testament to show and prove what we supposed to be eating and what we not supposed to be eating according to God. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to post links down in the description as well that even, even nowadays common man, even doctors tell you that, that certain things are, are not, not good for you to eat, not safe. You no. Know, uh, so it, it, what, what, what baffles me is that God tell us what we can and cannot eat even doctors tell us what we can and cannot eat people don't want to listen to the doctors people don't want to listen to God first and foremost people don't want to listen to anybody they want to do their own thing and it's going to be to their own destruction so you know what does that what does that show and tell us that those people have reprobate minds and I'm gonna post a link to that going for good part one signs of a reprobate mind because it's evident the evidence is all around us and all you can do is pray for them people that's all you can do ain't nobody gonna change their mind you gotta hope and pray that the Lord say okay I want them to have a chance at my at, at being in my kingdom because I gave them plenty of chances they don't they don't want to listen so guys there are the dietary law part well, no, I ain't no other parts. I'm going to do this and move on, Lord's will. Uh, turn to the New Testament. Turn to your New Testament, Acts chapter 10. And this is what I was uh, referring to in my last lesson about saving for the dietary law. Because a lot of people go here... <laughs> Even even somebody uh, commented on my "Gone for Good" uh, lesson and went here talking about the dietary law. And I'm gonna show you what it's talking about. I'm gonna show you that it that that it's an example to show you that we still have to keep God's dietary law as well. So that's called learning something on your way to learning something. Acts chapter ten. Acts chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, and I'm going to skip down to verse 9. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, hmm. which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Now, skip down to verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up upon the house to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So he was seeing some type of vision, right? Verse 11, And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, and as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. So we got all kind of beasts in this vision, right? All kinds, clean and unclean. Verse 13, And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Verse 14, But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Mm. So he, he, Peter is showing, Hey, I keep the dietary law. God say don't eat no, 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 you know, a lot of them, um, a lot of them animals that's shown to him in this vision. He's showing you, and this is a commandment from God. But uh, let me read on. Let me read on. I'm going to read on to verse 15 and skip down to 24. Verse, verse 15. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. <laughs> See, a lot of people go here. I'm sorry for laughing, but it's funny because I used to think like this too. You know, <laughs> but he's going to show you what, what, what the dream mean and everything. Now, skip down to verse 24. 
So, so in other words, it's saying, hey, you eat anything you want, long as you pray over Peter. <laughs> That's what he's saying to him, right? No. Nah. <laughs> Verse 24. And the mall, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. See, now Cornelius, background on him, he was a Rome, he said he was a centurion of the Italian band, Roman Italians. Okay. So he was not of the seed of Israel, right? He was a Gentile. Okay. Verse 25. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Hold on. Hold on for a minute. Verse 28. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is unlawful and unlawful and an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But but see, that was a civil law that that the Israelites had during that time because back in the day, days of uh, Nehemiah and them when, when they built the second temple they had found out that everybody was going into these other nations that God told them not to not to go on to and they was having children and they had they so that they, they made their own little civil law but show you what God say verse, verse 28 and he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Mm. Because God is not a respecter of persons. God wants everybody to make it. We are all his creation. You know what I'm saying? He said that he should not call and that applies to everybody, that applies to us too, that we should not call any man common or unclean. It was not talking about food, but it was showing you that we have to keep the commandments of God, and part of that is his dietary law. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. He said, God has showed me that not to call any man common or unclean, and, and what do we see today? We see a lot of people with hatred and bigotry and racism in their hearts. That is not of God. Now, now, go to the Old Testament right quick. I want to show you something. Daniel chapter 9. No, 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 no. Daniel chapter 1. Daniel 1 beginning with verse 4. And this is when Daniel was in captivity with Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 4. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. See, just like us. We not in our homeland. So what what the majority of us speak? We speak the language of the land that we live in. As learn some on your way to learn something. You do not have to speak Hebrew. <laughs> you can't get overly righteous, okay? <laughs> now, I'm going to read on. Verse 5. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azari, Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave, gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and unto Azariah of Abednego. So what do they do when you be, be, in, be put in captivity and slavery? What do they do? They change your name. See, ain't nothing new under the sun. Now, uh, verse 8, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Whoa, because Daniel keeps the dietary law. Daniel and his friends know they have to, cope, they have to obey God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and for the sake of time, I'm moving on. 
he, he, he asked for pulse, which is uh, lentils and whatnot like. But that's just, that's just another example. Now, let's go to the foundation of this. Turn to Leviticus 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Verse 1 through 4, and I'm going to skip down to verse 7. Verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever part of the hoof and its cloven footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. Now, verse 5, I say the coney, that's like the rabbit in the rabbit family. So you can't eat that either. People in the South was raised on this. You know, but it's all kind of clean beasts. And I, I'm going to post a link to this as well. You can look it up on your own. You know, see, I'm from the Windy City. You know what I'm saying? What, what you see everywhere. You see pigeons. That's on the clean list of God's dietary law. You can eat pigeons, and they are in abundance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 and see, in future days, when the Great Tribulation comes, you ain't going to be able to buy or sell anything unless you got the mark of the beast. So it's going to be people looking for any kind of flesh. So I'm just letting you know, keep it, put it in your archives. That in the future, if you get caught up in this Great Tribulation, if you ain't in a place of safety with us, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get you a net and find out how to catch pigeons. You'll, you'll eat plentifully because they they everywhere in abundance. That's another lesson though. Now, verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean unto you. Whoa! <laughs> he said, the swine is unclean unto you. And it behooves me that even doctors tell you that it's not good for you. So you don't want to listen to God. You don't want to listen to doctors that did all this studying. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Verse 8. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. They are unclean to you. you say, don't even touch it. Bottom line. Now. Now. Turn back to the New Testament, Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians and I'm again with verse one. Paul and Silvanus and Timothy is unto the church of Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that our, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all towards each other aboundeth. Verse 4, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Because Jesus warned us about this. We're going to have to go through some things <laughs> while we living in this flesh, especially when we're trying to do what the Lord say because the world don't do it verse 5 which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God mm. for which ye also suffer seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you verse 7 and to, who, and to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels so this is talking about when he come back. Verse 8. In flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Mm. So when Jesus returns, what are you going to do? In flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Mm. And, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9 who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So he ain't coming back as no sweet, cuddly lamb. 
It's going to be the wrath of the Lamb at the second coming. And people know this. I'm going to read on. Verse 10. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Now, Lord say he coming back with, with flames of fire, right? Turn to the new, turn to the Old Testament. Isaiah 66. He coming back with fire, right? Isaiah 66. Verses 1 through 4, and I'm going to skip down to 23. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things which, for all those things have my hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Verse Verse 3, he that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. Dog's neck. He that offered an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. Mm. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways and their soul delighteth in their abomination. Verse 4, I also will choose their delusions. Whoa. <laughs> Lord say, hey, you don't want to listen to me? You like it? I love it. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you fall in that folly. He said, I will, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. Mm. Many are called, but few are chosen. When I spake, they did not hear. Mm. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Verse 5, hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble. Oh, wait, wait, did I go too far? I said uh, verse 1 through 4, right? Okay, skip down to verse 23. I done got carried away, my bad. Bear with me. Verse 23, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Verse 24, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorrent to all flesh. Now, turn back on chapter to Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, beginning with verse 1. I am sought of men that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in the way that was not good, after their own thoughts. Mm. Verse 3. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifices in gardens, and burneth incense upon altars of brick. Verse 4. Which remain among the graves, and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine flesh. Whoa! <laughs> which eat what? Swine's flesh. And broth of abominable things is in their vessels, which say, to, which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. Whoa, you eating all these abominable things that's unclean unto you, saith the Lord, but you're going to say you holier than other people? Mm. Don't we got people like that in the world today? <laughs> wow. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Now, okay, now, turn to Acts chapter 20. The Lord gonna come with fire and he gonna devour with fire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those that eat swine's flesh and other abominable things that he said don't eat. Uh, Acts chapter 20. Verses, beginning with verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. 
I put that in. That's a mistake. That's an error. Error on my part. Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12. Hmm. That's before you get to Isaiah. Ecclesiastes 12. Before you get to Isaiah and Psalms of Solomon. Beginning with verse 9. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Whoa. Then I just do the lesson about exposed parts one and two. But these pastors are not teaching the people what they need to know. You know, there's a lot of pastors that, that, that teach against God's dietary law. So he's saying it's okay. And the Lord says, now nah, who are you going to follow? That means they setting them up for destruction. So when the Lord returns, they're going to think the Lord is <laughs> going to be on their side and you're going to devour them. Because they still ain't did what he said. He said, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought out to find out, out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Verse, now skip down to verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with, with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So don't, don't, don't think the Lord don't know what you're doing. You got seven angels running all over this world watching them right now what we do. They know. And it's easy to keep God's dietary law. Easy. Because I'm telling you. I, I was a, I was a favor that I was uh, man I loved that swine I loved uh, I loved shrimp you know what I'm saying I loved all 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 the, all the unclean foods that I could get my hands on I wanted to travel the world so I could taste all the delicacies of different countries and cultures but found out that a lot of them is unclean you know. Ain't it amazing that those of us with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, before we before we came to this, to this thing, before the Lord was so merciful to us to reveal to us his truth, his whole truth, and nothing but the truth, do you know before this, it was a whole bunch of uh, clean foods in abundance? Now you can't even go to certain restaurants for breakfast in the morning, and all they got is swine. All they got is unclean things, so you have to be careful. So it would be a glorious thing if, if we could have, you know, our own gardens and plant our own crops. But you know, the majority of us ain't, ain't, ain't farmers, but clean foods is always readily available. You know, the Lord made sure of that. So, that being said, grace and peace multiply to you and yours and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep His commandments. Peace.